Welcome to Shellshock. Our World War 1 game on Roblox with a turn-based attack defense phase. However, while other games about World War 1 on Roblox usually focus on combat, like any other FPS shooters, combat in this game takes a bit of a backseat. In other games, you survive to kill more people, but in this game, you actually kill to survive. Shellshock explores a topic that other World War 1 games on Roblox doesn't, life in the trenches. The game has unique mechanics that other shooter games don't that makes this possible. Most importantly, your thirst, your hunger, and restrictions from your officer that do not give you the freedom to freely attack the enemy however and whenever you want. This game heavily relies on group cooperation to successfully defend and attack. So sorry pal, you can't sweat your way through an entire trench on this one. So I actually have made a video in the past about a different World War 1 game called Entrench. And it does seem a bit redundant to make videos about the same game genre again, but this game is so different from Entrench I just had to make a video on it. The game starts out like how every country mobilized for war. Recruitment. You are respawned in your home country with the civilians cheering you on, presumably after you are trained and ready to be transported into the battle. You can explore the city a bit until you are finally put on a train and shipped to the front line. You are then spawned in the trenches. This is the first wave of the six waves to come. The year is 1914 on the first wave if you are the French or British, but if you are the Italian, the year would be 1915, and if you are the American, the year would be 1917, corresponding to the time each country joined the war. The atmosphere of the first wave is normal enough with the green fields that contain cows and chirping birds. Besides the two trenches opposing each other, that are in good condition, all you can do is wait until your officer gives an order. Maybe you got a little hungry so you head to the supply corner to get yourself a piece of food. In this period, you can play cards, talk to your teammates or interact with the bots. You also notice that you own a backup trench behind your first trench. The enemy has this too, adding up to 4 trenches in the map in total. But soon enough your boredom would be over, as the officer gives an order. The enemy will be attacking us. Defend our position. As the first artillery shell drops, the street shakes and the birds flock into the sky. As the bots take position, your teammates pull out their gun and start to man the machine gun. You pull out your own gun by pressing 1. The whistle is blown and the enemy starts charging at your trench with their battle cry. The machine guns fire off along with everyone else. You keep and take your first shot. Just to realize the rifle accuracy is absolute dog shit. Like for real, the best thing you would want to do if you want to shoot at someone further than 70 stars is praying that the bullet of bird is small enough for it to actually hit. The firing itself is also sluggish as there is a small delay from you clicking and the gun actually firing. And if all that isn't enough, the damage of the default rifle is 33, making you have to hit 3 or 4 shots out of the 5 shots on a healthy enemy to finally take them down. While this is frustrating, you're gonna have to deal with it as it is the only option you have because you can't keep a gun that you want with points, which I will get into later. Other than the gun itself, you also have a single grenade that you can restock when you are accessing the ammo box. You can throw the grenades with G. I recommend to use first person to throw or else the grenade is gonna fly all over the place. If you are attacking, you have 3 lives. If you are defending, you have 2. Running out of lives will make you unable to spawn and you will be stuck in the menu until a new wave begins. The round ends if the attacker captures the trench by having more troops in the trench than the defenders, or the defenders successfully defending the trench for a certain amount of time, or if all the attacker's lives have gone out. If you won defending the first wave, you will still spawn in the first trench and you will still own the first trench, but if you lose to the attackers, you will spawn in your team's backup trench behind the original trench. After one of the teams won, the second wave then begins, probably in 1915, but again it varies with the countries you play as. The second wave has the same structure as the first one. You wait in the trench until your officer gives out an order, so you do just that. But the environment has changed. The overall color saturation has decreased. As you walk in the trench, you can see that the wooden walls have been damaged, and you take notice of the mud puddle that you can drink and the rat hole that has appeared. At this point, your bottle probably ran out of water, so you went to the supply corner to see that either the food supply or water supply has run out. 
The terrain above the trench has craters and the trees has been broken off or slanted. Then the officer gives out an order to attack the enemy position. And then the artillery started firing, raining down shells to disrupt your attack. You, your teammates and the bots begin to line up for the charge. The whistle is blown and the entire team charges without a single person left behind. The enemy starts firing their gun and everyone charges. But you will also need to worry about the aimbot artillery that probably did in the first wave and the mines that you somehow always see too late. If you do manage to get in the trench, the walls to the other trench. This is the best time to use your grenade. Your gun now becomes more reliable and sometimes it still finds a way to miss and point blank. You also can stay in your trench if you are attacking as your officer will start sliding into literal pieces in the wave orders. Wave 3 is when the environment really changes. The bright colors in the start has now turned to a bluish hue. All the food and water has probably run out by now. Your face and your uniforms are covered with mud, and the tree's leaves have fallen along with the trees. The ground above the trenches is filled with craters, and the trench itself has its floors broken off in some part, and the sky has turned grey. Your officer gives out an announcement. The enemy will be attacking us, again. As your team begins to take position again, and the artillery shell starts raining down, you look at your hotbar and see the mass option. You started wondering what it is for. So what is it for? Well, currently nothing. This version of the game, which is Alpha 1.1, doesn't have gas in it. But the original does, aka the version before this update. I'll go more into the original version later. The wave goes as normal, the enemy attacks and you will have to defend. Also, a neat thing in the trench is the fortification box where you can spend your points you have gained by getting kills to buy landmines or barbed wires. You can place these on the trench field by pressing F and selecting the item you want to place. Just be careful not to stay out there for too long or get shot for trees, and not to place the fortification on the wrong side. These extra custom defense placements should help you when the enemy comes charging. Okay, so the match hasn't ended in three waves. Good. Well, actually, not good. It is wave 4 now. It has begun to rain. The uniforms are even muddier than before. Your face is covered with mud along with visible bandages wrapped around some of your limbs. At this point, drinking mud water and munching on rats should really be considered as food and water, as the supply of food and water has run out two waves ago. If you want to catch a rat, you just need to throw it in front of the rat hole and hope that you clicking is fast enough to catch the rat, which you then eat raw. This makes those fried rat troll orders actually seem legit actually. As usual, after some time the officer gives out an order to attack the enemy position. Artillery shell starts raining down again. The whistle is blown and the team charges. While running in the field, you might find a farm that hasn't been completely destroyed yet. You can pick up carrots from the farm and it serves as an alternative way to get food without eating rats. You can also milk cows for thirst if the cow is still alive, but I doubt they are at this point of the game. Wave 5 is the second to last wave. The conditions really can't get any worse. The rain has worsened and lightning strikes are common. Your face is covered in even more mud, and your eyes are now red. All the dead trees has fallen. The field that was once green doesn't have a single blade of grass left. Craters and trees are everywhere. The food and water supply has been gone for three waves. The officer gives out another order to defend the trench. The artillery shell starts raining down and the whistle is blown and the enemy charges. The artillery explosions cannot be differentiated from bolts of lightning hitting the ground anymore. As the enemy comes charging in, you still can't shoot them because of the garbage rifle you were given. And you realize the things that are actually stopping them from hopping in the trench were actually the bots with actual aimbots. The mines, the artillery shrapnel, and of course the machine gun. Let's talk about the machine gun. In World War 1, it is regarded as a killing machine for being able to mow down so many people in a short period of time. It was feared by every soldier attacking the trench. In this game, it is the exact same thing if the gunner is competent. 
Just be careful about the ammo, as reloading takes a lot of time. The controls are pretty straightforward. A and D to turn the machine gun and W to shoot. There's no turning up and down, but if it does exist, that would make keyboard controls for it to become a pain in the ass. The spread on the machine gun is even worse than your rifle, but it actually gives an advantage because it can be great for front and you can be a little less accurate with a machine gun angle as opposed to a fully accurate machine gun. The conditions really can't get any worse. Your clothes are still dirty, the rains hasn't stopped, and the trench didn't magically fix itself. The morale on both teams are as low as ever. Your eye bags are bigger, and your eyes are even redder. God damn dude, we literally look like crack addicts. And surprise surprise, the food and water supply is still out of stock. Better have had a full tummy last round, or you're gonna have to eat rats and drink mud water again. The officer announces his order. Attack the enemy position. The artillery shells rain down, this time more intense than ever. Everyone takes position for the final charge and then the whistle is blown. The team charges at the enemy's trench. Some died of gunshots, some stepped on mines, and some prone and hide behind trees just to get killed by artillery. While the few that got into the trench died by grenades. The final charge for the war and will finally break the deadlock in the front line. And the way finally ended. The match ends without a change or barely a change in the front lines in wave 6. But you can finally go home now, right? You are transported back into the city where you were transported from. This time, there are no civilians to cheer your return. The shop and factory has been abandoned. It feels like the entire place is empty. The recruitment table is gone, with nothing but a box and scattered papers. This is your home now. For both sides, this is what you are greeted with, whether they won or lost. Before I go into conclusions, I'll go over some questions and features to tie up some loose ends. You can go into first person by pressing V. The loadout section in the menu is where you can buy guns which are greatly improved versions of the default rifle, with the points you get by getting kills. The Webley Revolver, however, is a game pass that you can buy, which I have as you can see in some of the gameplay footage. Now a question that might pop up is, does the points for guns save? Unfortunately not. They used to save in Alpha version 1, but the saving system there was unreliable. The only gun that saves now in this version, is the Webley Revolver, as it is a game pass. For those who had points or owned guns in the Alpha 1.0, their data is stored somewhere else and they will be given the items and points back when the game is out of testing phase to prevent data loss. Now the first version of the game is referenced a lot. I don't have footage of it, but the first version used to crash a lot. The first version also had chlorine gas, which admits a green hue when used and would damage you if you weren't wearing a mask. The gas can only be used from 1916 onward, but it got removed in the update because Roblox Terms of Service doesn't like that. Shellshock is a very unique and refreshing Roblox game I have played in a while. It has touched on topics that I've never seen any other World War 1 games did. I think the UGIs can do a bit more of an overhaul, because it reminds me of those Tycoon games or an old 2016 Roblox game. But the atmosphere of the game is pretty good, and really brings out Roblox's blocky feel. Although I feel like the goofy running animation can only be used on the early stages of the game, and doesn't fit well with the later stages. The combat is also kind of clunky and unreliable, which while can be frustrating, it really adds to the chaos that is going on in the battle. The game also does a great job with the stylization of the characters. It might be uncanny at first, but in the late stages, it really does add to the atmosphere. The game is in a cash grab. It doesn't require a second life to become the quest because you don't have to grind, and it isn't seeking a huge amount of popularity. Speaking of popularity, at the time of writing this, the game only has around 500,000 visits, as it has only been out to the public for a few weeks. 
but I do believe this game deserves more recognition. So if you are bored or are looking for a unique experience, I recommend you try out Shellshock. While the development team is small, they are very dedicated to updating the game with bug fixes and features. You can support the development by liking the game, favoriting, joining their group, or buying their game packs. But until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.